Hey guys, what's up? So I'm a little late with uploads and all that stuff, the videos these days, because I'm uh, training for my, you know, my half marathon coming up on this Saturday actually, and I'm also working on building my new coaching business. So sorry about that. So the following video is a little bit late <laughs> because I've actually filmed it over a month ago, but better late than never. So let's go to the track and do a track session with snow on the track. All right, uh, let's do it. All right, so I'm on my way to the track to do my first real track session of the season. We're doing a VO2 max session. The plan is to do six times 800 meters at VO2 max pace. And we're gonna throw in some 200 meter reps there as well at mile race pace. So it'll be a tough session but uh, tough sessions are awesome. There's still a lot of snow out here in Norway, but it's definitely spring. So uh, the ground is, the road, so to speak, is more or less dry. And uh, I think there's, a, there's a one lane on the track that's available too, we'll see in a minute. All right, so it seems uh, more than one lane is freed up from snow. Too bad that the inner lane isn't free though, because I would love to run 400 meter for the lap, for the lap but whatever, close enough. So uh, let's get changed and uh, get started with our warm up. All right, so we're warming up. I like to do the warm up clockwise, which is essentially the wrong way around the track, but I think it's a good idea just to, to, to move both ways a little bit. As long as there's no other people here, then that's fine. All right, so I've done the warm up, four kilometers. Uh, did it mostly easy, did a little bit of, uh, like a couple of laps at a little bit of a faster pace. And then I did a few strides at the end, just four light uh, strides. Now I'm gonna do some foam rolling. It's my first time doing foam rolling at the track, actually. But I think it's a good idea. You know, I've been struggling a little bit with various injuries. I'm very pro prone to getting uh, quad strains and glute strains. So I think it's a good idea to just get those muscles nice and supple just before the workout. So I'll start out by doing two times 200 meters, just a couple of them. Um, to touch on that speed, I'll do a 200 meter walk in between. So it's basically a lap where I run 200 meters fast and then 200 meters walk. Do that twice. And then I'll do six times 800 meters, as I've said, with uh, two minutes rest. So, you know, I'll do the 800 meters in about three minutes, a little more than three minutes. All right, I'm gonna get changed, just take off this jacket and stuff, and then we're gonna get going. All right, we've done our two 200 meter reps at mile race pace, about. And now it's time to do the, the VO2 max work. So we're starting over there. Two laps, 800 meters. I'll put you guys down here. Uh, so you can watch me as I pass by. Probably went out a little bit too fast. We'll see. We'll see. The heart rate will keep rising 
over the course of the six repetitions so it's good to be a bit on the conservative side at the beginning actually which is not what I did but we'll try to keep it steady on this second rep put you guys down here so you can see me from the back this time it's a little bit cold so I put on my hat again I'm gonna put on some gloves as well you guys up here now so you can see me coming through the turn oh yeah all right third rep that was hard and I'm definitely running a bit too fast I'm just being slowed down a bit by the lactate so just gotta be even more conservative. It's so difficult sometimes to just hit that that right pace. So easy to get a little bit too eager, especially in the first half of a of a lap or the first half of a session even. Just overdoing it a little bit, ending up not being able to hit the right type of intensity in those later reps. So I've decided to take a little bit of a longer recovery before the last three reps. So I've done three, I have three to go. And so rather than doing two minutes between, probably gonna do three, possibly even four, we'll see. And just jog it out a bit. Because you know, when it comes to lactate, lactic acid, hydrogen ions, acidity essentially in the muscle uh, active recovery is better meaning if you just sit down and rest even though that might feel really good you're actually recovering less than if you went for a jog like I'm doing right now and that's because when you're jogging your muscles are actually in your heart etc are actually consuming lactate clearing lactate so, clearing lactate is a good thing. Uh, of course, in a workout like this, you actually want a fair bit of lactate because that's actually part of the training effect comes from running with a lot of lactate. You know, VO2 max pace is a very anaerobic pace, even though it is uh, considered maximum aerobic capacity, there's still a lot of anaerobic contribution to the metabolism at that point so all right so we've done three minutes break now so we'll, we'll, we'll do four minutes so i'll put the camera down here you can watch me from the side this time all right Yeah, I was able to keep it a little bit more conservative on that one, which is good. But I still need to keep it even more a little bit on the conservative side because honestly, I'm probably better off doing like somewhere between 5k and 10k pace on this workout rather than true VO2 max pace just to ease into it a little bit as I have a few more weeks where I'll do workouts like this. So it's good to just start off a little bit easier. So note to self even easier on the next rep. Now, what puzzles me is, you know, I'm gonna save that for the next talk after the next rep. There's something that puzzles me with, in terms of my heart rate and pace. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. We have two more reps. Should I put you guys on the other side maybe? <laughs> Vary it, the, the, the view. So there you are on the other side. Two more reps. 
1.30, so I have 30 more seconds of rest and then we hit it. Kept it more conservative on that one. Around like, I guess, 356 per kilometer pace, which that's closer to like 10K pace for me. So that's good. All right, what, what puzzles me is that I'm just hitting like 190 and maybe 192 in terms of heart rate. And my max is like 208, at least 205. I've seen 205. So that I find that strange because that's pretty much the same heart rate I have when I do lactate threshold runs in this. Maybe the heat is a factor because it's pretty damn cool right now. So I don't know. All right, there's one more to go. One more to go. I'll put you guys up. I'll put you guys up here and I'll actually do it from here. So I'll finish up at the finish line. All right. We did it. Yeah, last lap, 345 pace. I was cruising at around 190, 192 BPM. Interesting. I think it has to do with the heat, it must be. So when it's warmer out, I'll get a higher heart rate. So my lactate threshold heart rate today would probably be like 185 or something, right? And then my VO2 max heart rate is more like 192. Whereas on a hot day, my VO2 max heart rate is more like 200, 203, that sort of thing. Whereas my uh, lactate threshold heart rate would be like 190 in those situations. So, yeah. Ah, anyway, whew, it was a good workout. I always love going to the track. It's always a lot of fun. And uh, today was a bit interesting with the snow. <laughs> so, anyway, first workout done. I'm gonna do three weeks of VO2 max focus. I'll still do threshold. And then I'll follow that up with three weeks of, of more like race pace, half marathon pace, threshold pace, that sort of thing. Uh, but we'll still touch on the, uh, on the VO2 max pace. And then we'll throw in a little bit of of that sort of mile race pace, just like the fast reps in between there, just to maintain some speed and work on that economy and leg turnover. And so that'll be good. I, I didn't, I wasn't able to put down as good of a base as I wanted over the winter. As you probably know, you know, I did. If you follow me on Strava, there's a link in the description to my Strava profile. You'll be able to look at this workout, look at the heart rate data and analyze it and stuff. So if you follow me on Strava, Strava you'll know that I've, I've struggled a little bit over the winter with a couple of bouts of cold. And I also did get like a couple of minor niggles and stuff like that. So I wasn't able to get the mileage up as much as I wanted, but it's all right, it's all right. Hopefully I'll be able to tolerate these harder workouts now without any tendon issues or anything like that. So anyways. Thanks for watching, I'm gonna do a cool down. And yeah, that's it for the day in terms of training. So, hope your training is going well. Leave a comment down below what you think of this workout and if you've done anything similar lately. And please subscribe, of course, if you haven't done so already. I'll put a link to some of my other track vlogs somewhere here, uh, so you can check that out. All right, have a great day, bye.